welcome. I am Hope at Crafty Hope and it is now week nine of this prompt project that I am calling Crafty Hope Prompts. If you don't know much about it, I've got a eight of, no, I'll have 16 other videos or so about it. I've got a whole playlist. I'll put that playlist up there if you want to catch up. But basically realizing that there are 52 cards in a playing card deck and 52 weeks in a year, I made a list of 156 prompts. I'll have that list of all those prompts below that I could pull three a week and alter a card to create my own prompt deck. Once that card is made, I take another day during the week. So Mondays I do my cards and on Saturdays I reveal a prompt project using the prompts on that card. If you have any questions about that, if that's not clear, please ask me. Um, Today is Monday and it's time to pull my week nine prompts and create my card. So I'm going to put up weeks one through eight and shake up my little can and pull out some prompts. Oh, I can't. Okay. This one says washi. Oh, my light is weird, isn't it? Okay, so that's going to be washi tape in some form. It might even be a, um, I've got some paper that is washi, because that's what washi means is like a tissue paper in Japanese, and I've got some of that from a friend of mine, so I might use that, or I might use some washi tape. I'm, I'm not sure right this minute. So if you don't have washi tape or washi paper, you can also use like masking tape or some other kind of tape that makes you think of um, a lot of people have ma made handmade washi tape using masking tape and other types of tape that are just painted on so you know play with that idea so those are some options for the prompt washi the second one is eco dyed fabric so why are the my light is being really weird y'all i'm sorry about that uh, so eco dyed fabric is basically fabric that has been put in a bath of some kind of steam bath, boil bath, with things you find outside eco. So leaves and flowers and things like that, and then it gets dyed. I do have eco dyed fabric. If you do not have it, maybe find a fabric that has some kind of floral print on it or botanical print or something along those lines if you have a rust dyed fabric instead maybe go with that or just use a fabric you know you can take off the eco dye portion of it and just go with that so that is whew, let's see so we've got some washi eco dye fabric and then let's see what number three is going to be fairy all right, y'all, that is, I've already made at least one fairy on one of my cards here. I have a thing for taking, especially those Tim Holtz paper dolls and putting wings on them and creating fairies. But I can also, for a larger project, maybe do an assemblage fairy of some kind. Lots of fairy images, um, print out a fairy something. Use uh something from the graphics fairy even that's a website that has a lot of printables and they're not all fairies it's just some neat printables so somehow incorporate fairy into those prompts or into whatever you alter so if you don't like these prompts you don't have to use them. remember i've got that full list below of prompts that you can pull your own but I'm interested to see how y'all work with these three things. Um, last week was pretty easy. Uh, this week looks like it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle. I'm going to think on this and I'll be back in just a second. I've gathered some things. I'm going to go over them real quick and then we're going to try this. So for washi, I did pull out some of, and I looked it up, washi does mean a traditional Japanese paper. That's all it means. So I have, y'all, these beautiful papers that a friend of mine sent me. She was living in Japan and collected all of these for me. So I've got this just absolute gorgeousness from her and so I may use some of that I'm trying to decide because it's so precious to me and I have a hard time using precious things <laughs> for eco dye fabric I do have this 
Eco Dye fabric that I don't even know. I think I made it on one of the Southern Gals Designs retreat she did several years ago. So um, it's it's been around a while. I need to use it. That's why it's on the list. That's why Washi's on the list too because I tend to not use these things. And then for Fairy, I've pulled out this. I believe it's a Finnebear stamp that I think I'm going to try to incorporate. It's just about almost the exact same size as my card, so we'll see. If not, I have other stamps I can make my little fairies with the wings. I've got a set of wings here already. I might can add those if I can get these wings up. Um, I have these wings here that I might could add to the stamp. They're a little small. Anyway, I'm blabbering. I'm going to get to it. I think because the washi is so thin I'm going to try to uh, just put some gesso on my card to cover up the numbers and all of that so it doesn't show through. That's where I think I'm gonna start but I may sand it a little bit first. I am going straight with a sanding block. This is just a cheap one from the Dollar Tree and I'm lightly going over both sides. I'm not trying to take the image away. I'm just trying to scratch into that like laminated surface of the playing cards so that it has some tooth that my gesso can stick to. Now I start with a white gesso and pretty quickly it's evident that it's going to take either bazillion layers of that <laughs> or I need to do something else to cover up that image. So I'll switch over to my black gesso and it pretty quickly covers up the, the images that are on the card. But I don't really want to keep the black on there because I know that will... Uh, show through as well onto the washi so once I get both sides painted with the black gesso and dry I'm gonna go over the black with the white just to give a little bit more of a, a, a light base to it and it didn't matter to me that some of the black is peeking through and it's I just didn't want the images of the cards to show through it is the big thing for me I, I wanted pretty neutral base so you can see that black's on there, it's dry, and I'll come back in with the white real quick. And I'm going to do this to both sides. I'm not going to make y'all watch it though. <laughs> but I am using the heat gun to speed up the process. And see that white's on there, it looks all nice. A little bit of the black is peeking through, but that's okay. I was afraid that with the black, once I put the washi paper down, you wouldn't be able to see the the Japanese characters on the paper. So that's that was important to me that those show up. I selected this pretty piece and y'all I have no idea what any of that says, what it pertains to. I know the page behind it had some like anatomy images. So this could be from like a textbook or something for all I know. I'm gonna use matte gel medium to put it down because yeah, I like my gel. I, I can trust that it's going to stick really well, whether that that lamination came through or not. It's it's just going to be really nice, yeah, to go down and it'll help. If it does get transparent, it's great. That's fine. I've got that white down, but I want to make sure it sticks really nicely. I was really sure I was going to keep this card pretty simple basically because I love that washi paper with the the Japanese characters on it and I didn't want to cover it up so much and I didn't really want to tear it down for collage so I'm keeping this pretty pretty simple all in all if you saw the image at the front you, you can you can kind of see it it does take a little bit of a process for me but I used all kinds of things that I really loved this was this was a lot of fun because I'm really kind of leaning into some of the things that I know that work or some of the things that I'm enjoying doing and materials that I've recently rediscovered. Part of this whole project for me is to use some of these things like this washi that is in my stash that I hoard and make too precious. And I hope that if you're playing along, this project is doing the same thing for you, getting you to dip into your stash and and work with those things that maybe you, you've been too afraid to use. So break them out, use it, experiment, play, try some of the techniques. And that's the other thing is with the three prompts, it's making me combine things that I wouldn't normally think to combine to see how those work. And I that's, yeah. 
that is awesome. I've got the white gesso out here again. I decided to do just a really light scraping of it on top of the paper just for some texture to break it up. And you can see I'm using just a really tiny palette knife to do that. I didn't I didn't want anything too thick or large and clunky. Yep, and that's it. So, and something about, I've got this fine liner bottle with some, I think it's gold medium and gold acrylic paint in it. And something about that caught my eye off to the side. And I was like, well, if I'm going to keep this fairly simple, I need a little bit more texture, a little bit, a little bling or something to it. So I do add that gold fine liner just in a scribble on there. And I dried that real quick. And it's time for me to go with the fairy now. I decided, you know, like I said, this fairy stamp. She's got a very like Art Deco, Art Nouveau thing about her. I love this stamp. I bought the whole set of stamps because of this image. <laughs> I'm using Stays On. And I found some of that washi in that stash that didn't have anything on it. So I figured, okay, well, I'll use a little bit of that and just stamp right on it. And my... <sighs> That stamp was not sticking to my acrylic block, so I decided to just put her down as carefully as I can and then just use my acrylic block on top for the pressure to make sure I get some even pressure on there. And how gorgeous is that? So once I get her down, I'm going to grab my... Uh, what are those my little detail scissors and fussy cut I'm not going to make y'all watch me fussy cut this whole thing <laughs> most of it but I'll show you I just did some fussy cutting in my mixed media menagerie project I'll put that in the upper right with a uh, some botanicals I painted so there is my little somewhere right in here I realize yeah with those off cuts I realized that, yep, there were two layers. That's how thin this washi is. It's so thin. It's like tissue paper thin. So you could possibly even use like a tissue paper or even a handmade paper is all washi is. Something just a super thin handmade Japanese paper is, like I said, you can look it up online if you want to get a better definition but washi tape works just fine too I can't remember what my intention was when I wrote the word washi <laughs> if I meant the paper if I meant the tape it doesn't matter I'm going with the prompt it's about what these prompt words inspire in you and not about the actual materials so I've decided I wanted to see how something kind of bleedy would work on top of the gesso and the gold and the washi. So I grabbed my Jane Davenport Brights watercolors here and I'm just spreading a color. And I think the color there is butterfly actually, which I think is fun because she's got like butterfly wings, my fairy stamp. So I'm getting that down and once I get it down I do a little bit of splatter just to get that blue a little everywhere. I love that shade of blue y'all. It's so it's so good. I'll dry it and then realize that I needed a little more grunge on there and for me that means turning to my coffee. This is instant coffee. If you've seen almost any of my other mixed media videos you've probably seen me use it. <laughs> It's just instant coffee that I reconstitute and I'm painting it straight onto my card and then of course I'll splatter a little bit and we'll dry that again. I do love how most things I don't like a shine on them but I do love that this coffee retains a little bit of the sugary shine to it. There's something special about it. I don't know maybe it's just I love coffee so much. Here's that eco printed fabric that I have I'm going to tear down a strip and off camera I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and create a ruffle just by folding the fabric a little and running a straight stitch along it like that so I'll pull out that matte gel medium again and get some of the thicker bit that's near the top that's just a thing with mine up toward the top that it gets kind of dried out but I find that the thicker it gets kind of thick and perfect for a quick adhesion for things. So I stuck that whole strip down and I'm going to just cut off the bottom end 
where it's hanging and I'll use that for something else later. Maybe I'll use it for my prompt project on Saturday because I really do like this ruffle, but we'll see. I may try to do something else with the, the eco print. And then I will grab my fairy stamp just like that and also stick her down with matte gel, but I'm going to, I'm going to get a paintbrush and put it straight onto the card. I'm not even going to try to put it on that super thin paper because I was afraid if I did, it would end up sticking to itself and I'd have to start all over again and fussy cut again. And I don't want to do that. Y'all did not. And then I decide she needs a sentiment on here. And so I look at the set of stamps that I thought she came off of. I don't believe it is the, the set that she came off of. It's another set that looks like that. That's probably a Finnebear or something like that. I'm not sure. It could be the set she came from. I, it's, it looks like a bunch of stuff has fallen off of there. But I found the stamp that says Dream. And I'll stick it straight into my stays on and put it on the card. And y'all, it's a big, I'll sh you'll see my thumbs down here in a second. Um, it does not show up. There was my thumbs down. I was like, nope, that is not going to work. So I think for a second and I go to my, so not my, my type typewriter and type out the word dream just on a little margin of paper. And yeah, you can see I used washi tape there to tape the paper to a bigger piece of paper that, um, so there I brought washi in in another way using some washi tape. But I decide I'm going to stick that fabric, not that fabric, stick that word right on top of where I messed up the word and use a little bit more of that super thin washi to, to back it just a little bit to cover one, to cover it all up, to cover that black smoosh off. And I'm going to stick it down just with my Uhu glue stick and that, Oh no, wait, then I'm going to grab the fine liner again and just do a circle around the word dream to kind of bring it forward a little. And while I've got the fine liner out, I do dab just a dot on each of the tips of the wings. Yeah, I see there. I'm like, oh, you know what would be cool? <laughs> so I'll try that and then flip it over. And the back side, y'all, is going to be super simple. I decide I, I kind of went overboard with that front side and so for the back side I will get those watercolors out again and splatter more of that butterfly oh I had to grab my that's where I'm going to put my prompts if you've not seen these videos before I do alter both sides of my altered playing card I know that's not typical for a lot of people who alter playing cards but I like to have them both altered but one side I keep functional and that's the side with my prompts and the other side is my decorative side where I make sure I include all three of the prompts so I splattered some more of that blue and then some of the coffee on this side and I will dry it quickly and once I get it dry I'm going to just smush it a little make sure it's it's good and dry and nothing smears and I'm going to alter my prompts real quick with I've got some what do you call it it's distress ink and old paper which it, it yeah and I've got this little blending tool type thing it's from the Dollar Tree I'm gonna and it doesn't do great because I think my old paper ink pad is probably drying up I don't know how old that old paper is <laughs> wow that's layers there um <laughs> But I'm going to get it altered enough to, to change the color from that stark white. I just didn't want these little strips to be super stark white on top of that washi. And it ends up being almost the exact same color as that washi below, which is kind of neat. So it kind of, these are going to blend almost completely into that washi. But first I'm going to trim around the excess paper so that just the words are there before I stick them down with my glue stick. But do you see that? I put down the word and it's it's almost the exact same color. So I think I need to buy some more of that Distress ink because I, I'm pretty sure I've used it pretty, pretty much. Yep, so those are great on there. I'll put them down and then use the fine liner to go around each of them in the same, like just a circle like I did with the word on the front. You'll see that in just a second. But I think it's pretty fantastic how how well that Distress Ink matches actual old paper. Isn't that cool? 
I think it's cool. I'll circle those and I'll also write the nine for week nine in my upper right corner with the gold fine liner there. And I, that's going to be it really for this card, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'd love to know how you're going to interpret these or if you're just going to get go and draw your own prompts. Let me know below if you can think of another way to use washi or eco dye fabric or fairy somehow. Let me know below. I want to hear about it. And if you do play along, make sure you use the hashtag Crafty Hope Prompts so that I can see what you've made. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming by and watching. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and come back on Saturday and see what I made for my prompt project with these prompts. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>